Welcome to the 10th class in this series about learning the Dart programming language. In this class, we're going to dive right into the very important topic of asynchronous programming. Buckle in. What is asynchronous code? Asynchronous code allows your code to move on to another section while it waits for the first section to complete its execution. Use cases for async code, writing to a database, fetching data over a network, or reading from a file. And objects used to perform async operations in Dart are what is known as the future class, and async, and await. Let's get familiar with some key terms for async operations. Synchronous operations are operations that block other operations from executing until it completes. Synchronous functions only perform synchronous operations. Asynchronous operations, once initiated, an async operation allows other operations to execute before it itself completes. Asynchronous functions, an asynchronous function performs at least one asynchronous operation and can also perform synchronous operations, so it can do both. This will become important. What is a future? Lowercase f here. A future is an instance of a future uppercase F class. A future represents the result of an asynchronous operation and can have two states, either uncompleted or completed. Uncompleted is a Dart term referring to the state of a future before it has produced its value. Let's look at a depiction on how the async process works. On the left side is the uncompleted future. On the right side is the completed version. So we start, the function is called. Our async function kicks off. Here, the future is waiting for the function's asynchronous operation to finish or throw an error. This is an uncompleted future at this point. On the right-hand side, the completed future. Once again, the function is called. The async operation kicks off. Here, we have the completed future. This returns either a value or an error. And you see going back to the caller, we have the value equals foo. This is a future of type string, of data type string. If the asynchronous operation performed by the function fails for any reason, the future completes with an error. So here we have a simulation of asynchronous code. We're using a delay here, a two second delay. So we have our future up here, fetch user order. Imagine that this function is fetching user info from a database. This returns future dot delay duration for two seconds, and it just prints the string username. Then we have our void main, our main function for Dart. Here we're calling fetch user order, so we're calling that function, that asynchronous function. We print in the body of this function, printing from main, and then we call the my func function, which is a regular synchronous function down here and in its body it prints from my func. So in this code, even though fetch user order executes before the print call in main and the my func in main, the console shows the output of not only the string in main, which prints first, but also the string in my func. And the reason for this is because it delays before it prints, simulating the asynchronous code. So the print in main goes first, the print statement in my func goes second, and finally the username string from our fetch user order function goes last. That's the way asynchronous code will work. So let's dive into the async and await keywords. The async and await keywords provide a decorative way to define asynchronous functions and use their results. When using async and await, to define the async function, add the async keyword just before the function body, just like this. This is an example with void main. So void main, open paren, close paren, and then async, and then your curly brackets for the body of the function. This will convert the main function in this case from a synchronous function to an asynchronous function. The await keyword works only within async functions, and we're going to see an example. All right, let's see an example using the async and await keywords. So the first thing we recognize is return types, when we use futures or asynchronous functions, change from string or void to future string, future void. They almost look like generics, right? 
the async keyword appears before the body of main and get data. This makes these two functions asynchronous. We use the await keyword in front of the call to our two async functions. The await keyword enables us to get the completed results of an async expression. The async keyword only works within an async function, as we've said before. An async function will run synchronously until it encounters the await keyword. So this dictates that all code in an async function's body appearing before the await keyword executes with no delay. Here we talk a little bit about trapping errors in our asynchronous code. We're using a try catch block. Many coding la languages have a construct like this. This is a mechanism for handling errors. It enables us to catch something unexpected that happens while our code is running. By catching the exception, we can prevent termination of the code. We use the throw keyword to raise an exception string that we specify. So here we have an async function called foo. We try to execute our code in our try branch. And if we get an error, we catch the error. And then we can print out the error right here. We have an await up here, which executes bar, which is this function down here, this async function. So again, imagine that this function is more complex. We tell it to wait a little while, and, and we're off and running. And of course, main is what kicks off foo to begin with. Right, we start in main, that's the entry point of our application. Foo gets kicked off, we try to execute, and what happens? We catch the error, when we go to bar, it throws the error, we use the throw keyword, it throws the error, it gets caught in foo, and we get error caught, and uh-oh, trouble running code. The code got cut off in this picture, but it should say trouble running code. My fine friends, thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, do a couple of things. Subscribe to the page, give me a like, leave a comment, and share this with somebody who might need it. We're trying to start a revolution here.